From the Second Union of Broadcasting Corporation, it is a pleasant good morning and um, welcome to this and final edition of the program Good Morning Sierra Leone for the year 2018. Coming up in this edition of the program, the Anti-Corruption Commission detains a um, former Defense and Internal Affairs Minister on corruption-related offenses. The main opposition of Cruz Congress, APC, says eight members will not cooperate with the commissions of inquiry, describing them as kangaroo courts. Government assures uh, APC that the commissions of inquiry are not to target APC as a party, but corrupt individuals who served between 2007 and 2017. We shall be looking at the general security situation in the country during this festive season. All of these and more lined up in this edition of the program, Good Morning Sierra Leone. But it is now time for us to join Maria Masuma for the national news in brief. The government has in release condemned depressing release of Sierra issued out by the All People's Congress Party on the 28th December 2018 concerning the commissions of inquiry describing it as inciting. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Suare, said the government will not tolerate any situation that will undermine the peace and stability of the country. The session was held at the Sludge Conference Hall in Freetown. Main opposition party All People's Congress has started negotiations for the release of former Defense and Internal Affairs Minister, retired Major Alfred Paolo Conte, from the Criminal Investigation Department. The former minister is currently being investigated for corruption-related offenses by the Anti-Corruption Commission. Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, Francis Ben Kaifala, has handed over a check of 7.5 billion millions from individuals to President Julius Madabio at State House. The move is part of monies recovered from suspects within six months to avoid prosecut prosecutorial action by the ACC. The ACC has so far recovered over 8 billion millions. Christmas in Sierra Leone is normally very electrifying but not without inconveniences like heavy traffic, scrambling for transportation to the provinces, and price hike on almost all commodities. During this period, hundreds of people leave the city to go to their hometowns to spend the holidays with their families and friends. As SLBC's Our Barry decided to spend Christmas on the remote but popularly both island to see how people on the island observe Christmas. That's it for the news. So over to you, Shikusumaya. Well, many thanks to Maria Masuma for the national news in brief. Well, I don't know where you enjoyed your own Christmas. Where did you go, Maria? Well, I was in here. Okay, thank you so much. As you know, we are an essential service, so almost every, in fact, every day we work. So we didn't have much, we didn't have move out of, of this uh, capital to enjoy Christmas because we are working day in, day out. The program you're watching is Good Morning uh, Sierra Leone, live on the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well, as you may have heard in the news, government has in a press, in a press a statement condemned the press release put out by the All People's Congress, APC, on the 28th December 2018. 
on issues relating to the commission's <coughs> inquiry, stating that it is inciting the Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Suare, said that the government will not tolerate any situation that will undermine the peace and stability of the country. The session was held at the Star Hair Hair Office in Freetown. Let us now join Joseph Tsuri for more. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Suare, said the government will not tolerate any situation that will undermine the peace and stability of the country. The Minister of Information and Communication stated that the commissions are set for persons of interest and not the APC party as a whole. He noted that those who know that they are innocent should face the commission to establish their innocence. But one thing is clear, as a government we are, we are voted into office to ensure that we protect the lives property and ensure the stability, safety of each and every Sierra Leonean. As a responsible government, we will not see by, sit by and see anybody topping that process. We will ensure that anybody who gets involved in unauthorized demonstrations to create chaos, confusion, mayhem, will face the fullest penalty of the law. The Deputy Minister of Information and Communication, Solomon Jamil, in a press statement stated that the APC party is inciting ethnic violence in the country. APC inciting ethnic violence in Sierra Leone. The attention of the government of Sierra Leone has been drawn to a press release widely circulated on social media dated 28 December 2018, authored by Usman Fudi and Sunez Sexy General of the All People's Congress. Government notes with deep disappointment that at the time the nation is transitioning into the new year with a great deal of optimism and Sierra Leoneans at home and abroad convinced that with the milestone accomplishments and critical steps already registered by the new direction administration, Sierra Leone is indeed on the right trajectory. A handful of self-serving individuals think they could subvert the people's aspirations in their quest to escape democratic accountability. The pith and substance of the rather diabolic, sinister, and inflammatory press release seeks to generate hate and disaffection towards the Commission of Inquiry, to instigate and or afford persons of interest to the Commission the opportunity to escape justice on the eve of the commencement of the Commissions in January 2019. Apart from the naked trademark appeal to tribalism and regional sentiments in the release, Government views with serious concern a portion of the release in the fourth paragraph as follows. And I read, quote, The APC reiterates its, its position that former APC-appointed ministers and heads of departments and agencies will not subject themselves to any kangaroo court commissions of inquiry, which are clearly a targeted witch hunt against Northwesterners and senior APC officials. We wish to inform all and sundry that the APC is not on trial, and there has never been an attempt by the Bureau-led administration to persecute anybody. He called on the attention of civil societies and other pro-democratic institutions to remind the APC that democracy is not just about the holding of periodic elections, but also democratic accountability. SLBC News, Joseph Ture, Freetown. Well, in that press release by the APC, it was stated that members of the party will not cooperate with the commissions of inquiry, calling them kangaroo courts, demanding that the rules of evidence be clearly defined. Well, in the studio to talk more on this, um, I've been joined by Kramo Kaba, a member of the All People's Congress APC. Now, Mr. Kaba, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. We also have here in the studio the national coordinator of um, the Office of Government, <coughs> Government Spokesman, who is um, Obakar Josisi. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, I start with you, Kremo Kaba. Why do you think um, these commissions of inquiry, uh, kangaroo court, you know, are stated in your press release? <laughs> First of all, uh, in response to our responsible press release, the SLPP, SLPP's press statement yesterday is replete with fragrant uh, baseless and unfounded uh, allegations and claims that uh, we are inciting the people 
of Sierra Leone. That is so wrong and that is so irresponsible of a government that the opposition should not have a position on matters pertaining to good governance in the country. First of all, the SAPP has created um, an SAPP government. They have created a, a tribal government. They have been pursuing the APC people and Northwesterners willy-nilly with their whims and caprices, the mass sackings, the beating of parliamentarians, the unlawful installation of uh, the Speaker of Parliament, <coughs> the wrongful installation of the ACC anti-corruption boards, all of these things we are supposed to buy into as, uh, nationally as a people. The lopsided uh, commissions of inquiries that are embedded with hate and tribal uh, sentiments, the GTT, etc., etc., without uh, the commissions don't have rules of evidence. They don't even have rules of the court uh, created before the, the commission. So in other words, it's putting the cut before the us. So many things that they have created that are the sources, the, the cause of the, uh, uh, um, um, the tribal sentiment that we are seeing now. So if all of these things are here and built by and, and, and created by the SAPP, as a responsible opposition, we have to identify them as they are. This is what it is. This is the state of our country no, right Mr. now. Kibar, so Kibar, we Kibar, are, in, according to the Minister of Information and Communications, uh, the commissions of inquiry are not to uh, are not actually targeting APC members, but they are targeting those you know who have some questions to answer. If you know you are innocent, go and prove your innocence. That is what the government, the, go the government is saying. So the APC is not a social club. We are a political party. We are an opposition. We are not just going to sit down and speak individually. We are speaking for people we, repre we represent more than 50% of the country population. If these people are serious about uh, fighting corruption and the uh, commissions of inqu inquiries, we have raised point. Let us sanitize it. Let us bring in the rules of evidence because that is how it's going to be sanitized. Let us now, the, 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 the secret cow farm that the SAPP has created for their own people, like the Sajusus, like the uh, Julius uh, Sandis of uh, Secretary to the President, of the Lands Minister, of the Trade Ministers. So remember that for now, as it is, we are being arraigned, prepared to face the Commission of Inquiry because our passports have been removed from, removed from us. Those who are working, I'm not talking about ministers, but those who are already working that are not ministers, we know that automatically after we lost power, our jobs are finished. But they have sacked people, they have deprived them from traveling, and now even for emergency, you have to write to the Attorney General. But so if we are, uh, excuse me, I have to learn, no, please, I refuse. If we, no, I have to learn, please, you cannot stop me. No, I have to learn, I have to learn, I have to learn. I cannot time, crash land. I have to land. If we, okay, I'm going on. If we, if we are arraigned and ready, if we are arraigned and ready for the commission of inquiry, and we have sacred cows, and they are not touching them, and they are free with their passport to travel to do everything as they like, and we are waiting for the commission of inquiry. Let us all be on the same place okay, so say, we can move somebody on. Somebody will say this is not the first time. This is not the first time. You know, commissions, the commissions of inquiries. You know, this is not the first time uh, governments. Come and gone, governments, you know, have um, instituted commissions of inquiries. This is not the first time. So somebody will say, why, why are you so jittery? We are not jittery. We have made it clearly. From parliament, our, our, our parliamentarians have uh, put a case very, very clear that we are for the uh, uh, commission of inquiry. We are for the fighting of corruption in our country. We started it in the first place. So what we need to do is to sanitize the process so the people will buy into it. As it is right now, it is legal because it has been uh, surreptitiously passed in Parliament by depriving us the two the, 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 the two thirds majority. Fine. But that doesn't mean that when a bad law is passed by a minority in Parliament cannot be challenged in a civil manner. And this is how apartheid was disadvantaging black people in South Africa, a government, a, 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 a constitution that was established and passed in Parliament by a minority white people until Nelson Mandela fought for all his life, sent into jail for 26 years. This is a bad law that has been passed in Parliament. It is written all over the world laws that it does not have the rules of the court, it does not have rules of evidence, and it is targeted at uh, regional uh, uh, Northwesterners, it is targeted at the APC, it is targeted at a, 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 a tribe. Lest 
I am afraid. We should bring all of these people, relieve them from their jobs, take their passport from them, arrange them, and prepare them for us to be on the bandwagon of those who will appear in front of right, the okay. commissions of inquiry. All right, uh, thank you so much. And here is Karamo Kaba from the APC. Uh, I, I also have in the studio Obakajo Sise. He is the outreach coordinator of Office of Gov government, government Spokesman. Now, Mr. Sise, you've heard Mr. Kaba. He said uh, there's, there, there's not going to be you know, fairness. You know, uh, in in rules and commissions of, of inquiry, uh, he has also you know claimed that uh, most of the people targeted are members of the party. Why is you are protecting your own members who also served during the regime of President Puruma? And he is saying that uh, the rules of evidence must be clearly defined, and because of that, they are not sure whether you know, fairness is going to take place. Um, we have reiterated that uh, the commission is going to be free fair. And uh, the problem I have with the APC is that uh, they are notorious for making very reckless and irresponsible statements. And uh, they, 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 they believe in spewing hate, right? Which they normally use as cover to, 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 to commit their excesses. What has a uh, tribal region got to do with the setting up of a commission of inquiry? When they were stealing public money with impunity, did they did they ever steal those monies in the name of in, in, in the name of their tribes or, 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 or region? I mean, it is a shame, it is a disgrace. But that is what they are known for. When you talk about preaching hate, tribalism, regionalism, sectionalism, whatever it is you may call it, they are the ones who are known for that. They've divided this country. That was why this country went into war, and it's the same thing they are they, they are trying to do. But uh, I just want to let him know. That if they try anything stupid, the law will come down heavily on them. And this thing about uh, the, the, the Commission of Inquiry, the Commission of Inquiry is law. We follow due process, we lay the constitutional instruments in Parliament, we debated, and the law is very, very simple. You do not make amendments on constitutional instruments. You have two options. You either get two thirds majority to reject it, yeah, or it passes into law, right? And they did all what they could. They spent money, they did everything. They failed to get the two thirds majority. We all watched it on television. We had it on radio. At the end of the day, it was passed into law. It is law, right? So I wonder what they are crying wolf over. And uh, I also want to state here that uh, if you really know you do not have skeletons in your closet, you should be comfortable enough to go and face the Commission of Inquiry. Because at the end of the day, he has made mention of certain people, former permanent secretary, who, uh, 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 Dr. Sandi, uh, former minister, blah, blah, blah. The thing is very simple here. Um, the procedures are that uh, if certain, if people are named and evidence point towards them, they could be subpoenaed by the Commission of Inquiry. If this man has evidence against those people he's naming now, what stops Kamo Kaba from going to the Commission of Inquiry to report? As a matter of fact, we've already made that clear that people should take their reports to, 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 to the office uh, 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 temporarily being used by the Commission at Guma, Guma Building. So the, the, their objective in this whole thing is to create the impression that, uh, I, I mean, this is the most reckless and irresponsible part of it all, targeting Northwesterners. What do you mean by targeting Northwesterners? It is a shame that Whenever we want to discuss national issues, the APC bring in tribalism regionalism. It was the same thing they did prior to the elections. That was the only way they thought they were going to survive. They brought in open tribalism. They had to be castigated by everyone in this country. It is the same thing they are continuing to But that is why we, we have said, we have stated this here in all certain terms, that now that they are fanning the flames of ethno-regional conflict in this country, should God forbid that happen, the APC hierarchy, including their they are national chairman and leader, the former president of this country. They will be held accountable. And the International Criminal Court will be invited here to investigate them and take action against them. We've made that very, very clear to them. Because this has nothing to do with tribalism, it has nothing to do with regionalism. It has everything to do with accountability. Right? Public funds were spent in a manner that was dissatisfactory to every one of us. And we want to know <coughs> how that happened. Okay, so now, 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 the APC is saying that uh, the rules of evidence must be clearly defined. Like, for example, if somebody comes before the Commission of Inquiry and says, uh, for example, 
Mr. Beckley stole uh, five million dollars. There should be evidence to substantiate. And uh, as far as the APC is concerned, that has not happened. My brother, the Commission of Inquiry is an investigative mechanism. Uh, in as much as it's, it, it will be using the, the procedures and practice of the High Court and also has the powers of the High Court. But it's an investigative mechanism. Uh, it's not going to prosecute anyone, it's going to investigate people. That is why the government's position is that on that basis, the, the, the rules of evidence does not strictly apply. What we are saying here is, you are going to be investigated. At the end of the day, action will be taken based on uh, uh, the, the, the white paper that will be issued by government but, but after... The status, but the status of the, of, of the Commission of Inquiry is equivalent to that, to that of the High Court. Yes. So That's why I've just stated the distinction. In as much as it, 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 it will be using the procedures and uh, practice of the High Court, you understand? But the Commission of Inquiry will be investigating where, whereas the High Court prosecutes and, and, and makes verdicts against people. It is based on that distinction that we are saying the rules of, of, of evidence do not strictly apply. Because at the end of the day, whatever action is going to be taken against <coughs> cul cul culprits, you understand, will be based on uh, the white paper that will be issued by government, right? And you see, let, let us not trivialize this thing. This thing has nothing to do with the APC as a political party. Not everyone in the APC is a thief or, or, or is corrupt. People serve this country and it is morally right for them to be asked to account for their stewardship. I do not see any qualms about that. If you have closets in your cupboard, fine. We all know how people recklessly mismanage the economy of this country. That is why we are where we are today. He is talking about, I heard him just now on Morning Coffee, people are suffering this and that. The people start suffering overnight. The people start suffering overnight. We inherited an economy in austerity. And that only happened because you guys mismanaged the economy of this country. Resources meant to improve the lives of people. We are stolen in broad daylight. We all know that. And that is what we want to investigate. Okay, so now, this has nothing to do with political party. It has everything to do with okay, now, individuals okay, being held accountable okay, okay, as is happening all over the world right now. Now, one of the concerns of the APC also is that uh, you've already convicted uh, those who are facing the commission even before the, the, the commencement of um, the, 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 the inquiries. They are saying that um, it's like um, you, you are guilty until you have not proven guilty. Well, we are following due process. <laughs> if, that, if that was the case, we would not have set up a commission of inquiry. You understand? We are following due process. We ensured we took the constitutional instruments to Parliament. Parliament, uh, at the end of the day, well, <laughs> the, the, the debate happened. They lost the votes, and the, 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 the setting up of the Commission of Inquiry became law. That is due process we are followed. If you think, if you believe your hands are clean, prior to the elections, people are saying their hands are clean. What time is better you have to go and prove that your hands are clean? What was this all you and cry about? We are talking about money belonging to the people. Look, Sheku Sumara, when we had Ebola in this country, breadwinners died. Today their families are suffering. They died because of corruption. Monies came into this country to provide medication for Ebola victims. People ate those monies. And at the end of the day, breadwinners died. Today their families are suffering. Yeah? We have a lot of young girls today that are out in the streets as prostitutes because their families cannot cater for them. Young boys have become gangsters or whatever because their families cannot cater for them. They created poverty through massive corruption, unchecked corruption in this country. And we want them to account. That is the point at issue. Not this triviality of a region or this tribe or that. That is arrant nonsense. And we are not going to... We, hey, there is no way, right? In, 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 in this particular situation, we are going to bow to, to, to blackmail. Right? The law is going to take its course. It is, uh, will follow due process. Let them go and face the commission and prove themselves. And not to say they will not subject themselves to it. That is another matter altogether because at the end of the day, the laws are quite explicit as to what happens to anybody who fails to subject themselves to a commission of inquiry right. set up by law. Okay. So that one is another matter altogether. When that time comes, we'll cross that bridge. Okay, thank you so much. And he is the outreach coordinator office of government spokesman well also in the studio is a civil society activist and um, joseph sano now joseph you know you've listened to mr kaba yes. and also mr Sise on uh, these uh, commissions of inquiry uh the apc says uh that commission if they are well they are saying that uh, it will not be fair 
Because like you say here, or, or on the other hand, he's saying that fairness is going to be created, and that if you know you are innocent, go and prove your innocence. Now, from the civil society uh, point of view, you know, what do you think about um, this whole thing? You know, setting up <coughs> a commission of, of inquiry, and the APC saying, well, um, they, they are not sure what, whether it's going to be a, a fair kind of a process, and the SIPP is assuring that they are not targeting APC as a party, but they are actually um, uh, focusing on those who served between 2007 and 2017 to come and um, account for their stewardship. What, what do you think? Okay, thank you very much. Um, firstly, we really don't want both parties to really take the people of Syria Leone as jokers. It is very serious and it is important. When you go around now, you notice that we don't even, this is the country, we don't even have decent water. I repeat, I went to Tonkol in Ba, I saw the water is like a palm wine. Inside Freetown here, our children are getting water from the drainage. Education. Thank God we have free education now. When your child, during, uh, during those days, and even now, we're still facing a little bit of problem. For JSS1, illegally people are paying up to 300000 But before time, illegally people were paying one5 <coughs> right? And because of that, students, children were dropped out of school. Teenage pregnancy was in the high increase. And these are issues that are very important. During those days, we used to be the darkest city in Syria. Thank God the APC came and they ensured that we got lights. But now, our children were able to study. Now we have seen their light have been greatly improved on. That is governance. But to, to tell you the issues that have caused this is because of unexplained ones. You remember MRC produced a sale during the then SLPP to foot harata. And we and because of that, I think um, uh, the APC propagated it and then they came to power. Now, again, the SLPP is in power. When <coughs> during the time of APC, corruption was the order of the day. Now, let me tell you something. I like to call things by their name. <coughs> This commission of inquiry is very, very important, and it is a continuous something. Is it the first time that we're having commission of inquiry? No. We are there problems with the past commission of inquiry? No. Yes. And if it is not the first time and there were problems, you understand? And then the other question, is this commission of inquiry going to be done only in the closest room where the SLPP and APC will be there? No. We we'll have representative from the embassies or have representative from the from from, from the international community who have representative from uh, international ngos who have representative from civil society say it take or leave so it is not something that will be in one room where we are but really that for, your, for your information it is, not, it is going to be shown live on television thank you so so thank you to say it is going to be so so, 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 it, so it, why is not a close off thing that is not the case. So why the fight about commission of inquiry? If uh, what I see in this is that I've seen in this country when people are, uh, are called by the anti-corruption, people demonstrate the Absa to Kaba case, right? Mm -hmm. The former mayor case. These are people, you understand, that according to the, 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 the case they had, they have used our government money. And it is a shame on our part when people respect parties more than the country's uh, development. And they go to the, to, the, to the police, they go to the CID to demonstrate. And let me tell you something. I'm going to be frank with this. When you look at, if I was sitting down here with somebody that was, was, was allegedly a two-foot arata those days, I will bring it out. I will not allow you to say a word. Let me tell you, there have been a scenario here where people are take bulk money, going up country, you understand eh? They are part of the, the OGP. And the money got lost when it should be transferred. 
Let me tell you, these people should not. I hope there was one SLPP person here that was involved in that. I will tell them that. These people should not play with our lives. Those money should have better our lives. And we are calling. We are calling on the government. We are calling on the, on the embassies. We are calling on international stakeholders. We are saying this commission of inquiry is in the right interest of this country. Because when President Bill leaves office, he should, should be called to book to give the account of his stewardship. So what we are saying, people must not take us as jokers. People must not, because what is happening in this country, people use political power to siphon money. To live peaceful life. Okay now, Mr. And, now, okay, now, Mr. Sano, let us talk about this also. Um, the APC argues, the APC argues that there are some people who served uh, during the regime of President Bill or President Kuruma who are unlikely, you know, to face the uh, commissions of inquiry. That is, uh, that, that is, that is, the, that is the affair. Thank you very much. You know, this is just for me. I want to say something. When I saw the press release of the APC. I said boldly, and I will say it, take it or leave it or condemn me. I said to myself, is the APC supporting corruption? That was the first question I asked myself. Because if you know that Dr. Sandy, he was your, he was your minister, if you know that the, the, permanent, the, the FS now, or if you know that the former um, tourism minister had issues, the public have been asked to bring information on me. Mean. What is hell wrong with this thing? Why do people want to hold us backward? And let me tell you something. Whether the people like it or not, if President Bio, right, do not uh, ensure that this commission of inquiry happens, some of us will rise up and go. We will call on the international community. We yes, they have declared it. We want it happen. Now, Mr. Sano, now, Sano, also, uh, there are some Sierra Leoneans who are with the view, but um, uh, this is not the first time Sierra Leone is having commissions of, of inquiry. But at the end of the day, the recommendations by these commissions, you know, uh, are not even... I have it. In fact, so, so that is also what some Sierra Leoneans are, 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 are thinking. And but it is going to be another waste of time. At the end of the day, uh, recommendations will, will, will be made and uh, uh, nothing will come out of it. That is that is one of the concerns of Sierra Leone. That's as far as these commission, commissions of inquiry are concerned. That, that will be the time I will know that the, our now president is not serious about fighting corruption. If the recommendations are not put into action, believe you me, I will boldly say, Mr. President, you we are not sincere with your... Let me tell you, I want to draw you. Oh, look at all the people that are shouting, this commission of inquiry should not hold. Right? They have they are hiding under their parties. Mm -hmm. That is definite. Right? And the same thing occurred during when uh SFPP was asked for commission of inquiry. I did not see this type of way. They went before the commission of inquiry. And if you look at them, including Karma that is sitting here, they have had one or two issues that go to the public domain. <laughs> so they should come. I'm not, uh, and even, let me tell you something. I'm going to be very frank, right? If you see a man, I, the Commission of Equality have the right to call me. They have the sole right to call me, right? I, and don't tell me I was not working with the past government. If you tell me that, then uh, I, I, then somebody would. So you are also ready to face the Commission I'm of ready Equality? Because. You, I, we have several activism that yeah, we because did. Because somebody, somebody will say you also implemented projects. I in, did. Using government money. I, in, in fact, not government money, using donor partners' money, right? People, in fact, sometimes because... No, but is that now, the, the reality <coughs> is, whoa, 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 money coming to the country, whether it is provided by donors, it is for... And it, the is, and it is a public fund. It is public fund. Okay. I should be accountable. So what I am saying, right, we have... I have been called, some of us have been called several times for questioning. If you do not, if you are not, if you are not guilty, don't worry. Mm -hmm. not be, believe you me, if the SLPP dare to, to do something that is not right, we will bring it up. If you want, go and lock up in the cells. If you want, don't do what you want to do to us. Because we cannot see this country being divided into tribal line, being divided 
into political life. And what is happening in this country is that the people of this country, and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, want to, the, the politicians want to divide by, uh, by tribal life. Look at the police. Let's take, for example, eight months ago, these were the same police, the SL people we are shouting against. It is a pity that we are banging them there, we are banging them there. Who told you during the APC regime there are no break of, uh, 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 dis there was no disrespect for the constitution and the rule of law? He himself, he was self calling himself a sheriff. He himself, he was giving OGP money to go and he said the money was stolen. Can you take big money to, to go to uh, uh, Kono or what? Put, now they are go putting burden on the, on the police. Today it is SLPP, so it is SLPP police. Tomorrow it is APC, so it's APC police. It is unfair. And when you look at their salary, it's not commensurable. You are to, let's look at things that they have kids. They have people. You don't treat people like jokers. Go for this commission of inquiry. If you are free, if you are not free, you are not free. If you are free, you are free. And I tell you something. Believe you me if you want. Don't talk to me again because for me, I call things by their name. That's the difference between me and any other civil society. If SLPP does something, like for instance, when I was not happy with certain things in the free quality education, you can't hold me down. I will bring it out. We cannot joke with the lives of the people. You know, women are suffering in this country. Children are suffering in this country. You see somebody, you give him a position. In the next six months, the person has acquired so many wealth. You understand? It is not fair on our part. All right. Okay. We are not jealous of them, but at least there should be accountability. All right. Okay. Fine. And we so cannot much. sit down here and people come and say things that are not worthy. Right. And one, one last thing, please. Okay. Jibil oh, Bangura. Oh. Wait, Jibil Bangura. That is saying all type of nonsense. I am calling. I am calling on the info, uh, on the foreign minister. They have a bilateral attack to to uh, talk to the American ambassador here. So that they have, because if I stand here and say, let's burn the home office in America, or let's burn, because I'm an American citizen, let's burn the CIA office in America, they have the right to talk to my government here right. if I'm a citizen to break. Okay, they okay, should Joseph, do that because okay, Joseph, Joseph, very Joseph uh, thank you so much. I'm here is, um, from the uh, civil society. He's Joseph Sano, a civil society activist. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, this uh, morning. The program you're watching is Good Morning Segalion, live on the Segalion Broadcasting Corporation, where it's time to cool off. <laughs> and uh, we have the Segalion police here. As we come to the end of the festive season, we want to know how the general security situation of, of this country has been, uh, especially during uh, festivities. Well, uh, the head of police media, Superintendent Brema mm. Kamara, is here to give us an update. Good morning. Superintendent, and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so, how has it been? Festivities and uh, security? Well, if I should give you a one line um, uh, uh, response to it, I want to say, um, Sir, has been relatively peaceful, very, very serious collaboration. And uh, <laughs> we have been doing our thing in the sense that, as police officers, our responsibility is to provide safety and security for the people of this country. And that's what we have to do. So administratively, what we did was to prepare what we call a um, strategic um, operational plan. That one came from the top, a strategic level from the director of operations. And then it was filtered down to the regional commanders. And they, they themselves also prepared um, their own operational plan for their regions, and then filtered down to the divisions, and they themselves did the same. So we were able to do that one. And then we activated the incident command centers where we sit and monitor what is going on in the regions, what is going on in the divisions, and so on and so forth. And then even the forward control points, you know, we had the actual work to be done. We did that one as well. And then we were able to marshal, you know, our resources, what we have as equipment, what we have as fleet, what we have as people, we marshal them and then we put them into action. So when it comes to operation now, we want to say, we have been very robust. You see us almost every year, even though we are a state of about 13,000, and then we have a population of about 7.2. But uh, we are almost almost every year. And then we are being supported by the general public because we are working with local police partnership. But so covertly and overtly, sometimes you think the police is not around, but uh, covertly, uh, you know, um, that was how we were able to succeed at uh, the Bunch of State. Like to now about 19 criminals, 19 hardcore wow. criminals, 19. And then we put them before the camera. So what we did, if you are in Tata 
uh, uh, shop. We also have to wear that one, and then we all move together and work work. Uh, uh, okay. And then we were able to do that. So, 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 so you <coughs> believe the, 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 yeah. Anas, the Anas way? Yes, yes, yes. So, oh. so, so the thing is, you know, generally uh, you've been praised, right? Because uh, as media practitioners move around, generally, although it is not hundred yeah. percent, but generally you've been praised, you know, for effective and efficient policing during the uh, uh, festive season. But I must confess. Well, if it is coming from the press, then no, I, it, 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 it's so based on my observation. Yeah, like, after, you know, yeah, been, uh, yeah. well, it's a very good compliment for us, and then we, but we will not rest on our oars. Well, but somebody will say, you know, why we, we, are, aiming, have we are aiming for the one hundred percent, even though it's difficult to get. But if somebody can reach us at ninety, then we want to go for ninety five, and then maybe subsequently as we go for ninety eight, and then as we continue, but then how do you hope to sustain? 9. How do you hope to sustain the gains? Because no, the thing no. is, yes, today you've embraced for effective and efficient policing. But at the same time, you know, say unions want <coughs> continuity. They yeah, want sustainability. Yeah. What you normally do, normally after after an operation, we do what we call SWOT analysis. We go back, we look at our strengths, we look at our weaknesses, we look at the opportunities that we are there that we didn't make use of, or the ones we made use of, and then we look at the threats, and then we try to 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 fine tune um, our operations for the next operation. So this is what we normally do. Now that we know we have been praised, like I said, we cannot rest on our oars simply because um, we have been praised. So now we are aiming, if we, if we have got 80%, we are now aiming for 95%. So which means we have to put in more resources and uh, put in more effort to what we are doing now so that at the end of the day we get the required results. But like I said, we are working with members of the public. The LPPB, Local Policing Partnership Board, they are cooperating. You know, this concept, this LNP, Local Policing Policing, was a very good concept. And then we are now, we are now we are now getting the result we are supposed to get when it comes to safety and security. So we continue to push, we continue to work, we continue to patrol, we continue to stop, stop and search, we continue to do targeted ways, and then we continue to be almost, almost everywhere. What we call a high visibility assurance policy. But let's talk about your overt and covert operations. Well, I know I'm, I'm not expecting you to talk about you know, more, especially the covert, you know, because you go on the ground. But for the, the, the overt operations, um, let us know your, you know your presence because there are times. They will take advantage of situation, especially when uh, you know they've not seen somebody in uniform. Yeah, <laughs> they will want to be just uh, mischievous. So let us talk about you know mostly your overt. You know how do you go about? Because there are times if somebody sees a, a police officer in a uniform, <laughs> that person will be a, will be afraid to even you know do what probably he or she, she might have uh, you know uh, uh, thought of doing. So let us talk about your your, your overt operation. Yeah, we do our we do our patrols. Uh, <coughs> one, we do what we call foot patrol. That is what we call in police beat <coughs> patrol. Beat patrol is where a particular area is assigned to a police officer for him to protect. So, which means whatever goes on within that area, uh, it is the responsibility of that police officer. So, we normally go on beat patrol. Maybe you see two police officers, one, three, four, and they are being supervised by the senior. We do that one. We also do uh, what we call uh, mobile patrol. This is where we use vehicles, we move around certain areas. And then um, we're doing that one based on the information we are getting from our field operatives. You know, the field operatives are the ones I call covert policing. You know, they are there, they will tell you um, this area, um, there is a need for police presence. And then you see us beefing our presence there based on the intelligence we are getting. Well, based on the information, because it is information that we have to process to intelligence. So it's not uh, what comes from the field. Something can come from the field and it will continue to need to be information. But when we process it, if, we, if there is any kind of security implication, then it becomes an intelligence. So we have been working on all those ones. And then, like I said, um, we we'll continue to do what we call stop and start. Stop and start is made possible by what we call uh, by Section 31 of the Criminal Procedure Act Number 30 of 1965. It gives us the power to stop and start articles being conveyed, whether whether you are well dressed or not. We can suspect you, and then we can stop you. And but, but, but 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 there, there are times. There are times. Some of your your, your men, uh, you know, are so timid that when they see a very decent car, an exotic car coming, they will just dig it. You know, in real. Yes. They will just because they've seen a big man in that particular vehicle, they will not search. And there are times, you know, <laughs> you don't know who is who. So it doesn't matter if that person is in a Homer jeep. And because you see that person went dressed, uh, you think he or she is a rich person, you just allow him her to, to pass. You know, when I was here last week, we brought that issue. And honestly, I went back to the office, I called the, um, uh, the proactive people of the CDI, and I told them 
used by the observations made by people. You know, sometimes when you don't know the law, so this is why we call our officer and tell them it is a responsibility. You have the right to do no matter the, the make of the vehicle, no matter the individual. If you are suspicious of that individual, you have the right to, 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 to do what you call a search. Understand? Like I said, it's, they are provided by section 31. But then also, section 13 of the same criminal procedure at number 32 of 1965 gives us six powers of arrest. We do not have to wait for, uh, say, uh, what we call loose, hiding, and disorder people who you can find within the street between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. Those ones, we don't have to go to the court and ask for warrant of arrest. We can just arrest them. Any offense involving violence or dishonesty committed within the view of the police, we have the right to arrest. If somebody is suspected of having committed a crime or being about to commit a crime, that one you can also find out at 17.1F of Act Number 6 of 1991, that is the Constitution of the So we have the power to arrest and we can detain. So we have been working on all those ones to make sure that um, Sierra Leone is peaceful and Sierra Leone is quiet. Don't forget, we are the most peaceful nation in West Africa. Not anymore. Well, <laughs> that is the record we have for 2017, mm -hmm. Global Peace Index. Exactly. I'm referring to a document, Global Peace Index, for West Africa. And for Africa, we are thought. That was the world, we are so we are waiting for the 2018 and then we talk on the 2018. One thing that is common during festivities <laughs> is um, drink driving, you know, or drunk driving, over speeding, you know, leading to accidents. Yeah. Now, uh, are you, I know that the police uh, do have a uh, breathalyzer. Yeah. I don't know how many, but how effective was that used yes. during, or is being used during this uh, particular festive season? Very effective. This is why during the, um, this period, we've not heard of uh, so many crashes, you know, road crash. Well, we have to be very frank. We have to check the statistics. But uh, we've not had so many. And uh, because during our, we had a, a public notice we came out with, one that has to do with uh, cameras. We made reference to that one about the Road Traffic Act. I think it's Section 102. I'm not quite sure, but it should be. Um, in the West, in the Western world, it's called GUI. They have me under the influence, and then if you do that one, well, I was I, I got my I got my eye education in England, so I know what I'm saying. If you are driving under, if you are placed under GUI, it is even possible for them to retrieve your license for six months. You know, so we want to see how the parliamentarians can uh, go back look at the laws and see how possible we can retrieve somebody's license for six months or one year, because like you said. The more we, you, the more you are drunk, or the more you are under the influence of alcohol, the more you, there is the potential or the tendency for you to, to be involved in a kind of a road crash. So we are making sure that um, the traffic officers are there, they have the joint operation, joint traffic law enforcement of operations, the, the feature city council are part of it, and even the SLRS are also part of it. So we are working and we continue to work. So. All right, uh, thank you so much. I'm here is uh, the head of police media, Superintendent Pokaima Kamara. Well, today is actually good morning, Sierra Leone, um, special because we are going to go beyond the normal, uh, you know, the normal hours we, we spend on good morning, Sierra Leone, because this is the, the, the our own gift we are going to give to the public, you know, as we enter the new year. So today is a um, good morning, Sierra Leone special. We go for a very short break, and when we come back, we shall be talking to uh, Kramo Kaba from the APC, Josise, who is uh, the head of um, the government, uh, the Office of Go Government Spokesman. Uh, Joseph Sano is from the civil society. Well, also, um, uh, we shall be talking to uh, somebody from the Anti-Corruption Commission, talking about the indictment of him, um, or det the detention of former Defense and Internal Affairs Minister, and also the ACC, um, uh, recovery over 8 billion euros within a, PG, a period of um, six months. We are going for a very short break. I will be right back. As a mother of the house, whenever I want to prepare palm soup, there's no need pounding palm fruit. All I need is Inkulenu's Ghana's original palm soup base. My soup is done and its preparation, it is not difficult at all. Inkulenu palm soup base, it's easily done with no difficulties. Just take few ladles and your soup is done. And its flavor, ah, it's amazing. This is Inkulenu's Ghana's original palm soup base. And this is Inkulenu's Ghana's original spice palm soup base. 
Iden fruit and turkey berries are naturally added. Also available brown gold natural cocoa powder, sunny gold brown sugar, meat for full flour, shito, pizza and moringa. All available at Nyami Ado Enterprise, 1 Lower Waterloo Street, Freetown. Ikule Nu Palm Soup Base. Ghanaian Original Taste. Well, we've just been joined in the studio by the deputy director 
of um, uh, Education and External Outreach Anti-Corruption Commission, Alassane Kavu. Good morning, uh, Alassane, and welcome to the program. Good morning, thanks for having me. Well, he's here to talk about um, the detention of former Defense and Internal Affairs Minister, uh, retired uh, Major Paolo Conte, and also <coughs> the recovering of um, monies, six billion, eight billion over, and um, just a few days ago, seven, uh, seven point four of, of point five uh, a billion leons was actually handed over <coughs> in the form of a check to no lesser person than the president. But then quickly, let us talk about um, monies being recovered, Alaska. You know, how are you going about it? Well, we we have various ways of recovering money. It is within our mandate to do that. The relevant provision of the law is section um, 481, which talks about uh, protection of government revenue and government property. So uh, those that have not been paying taxes, for instance, we could go there and then ask them to pay or push them to pay. And sometimes we settle out of court when we have matters in which the commissioner makes a decision as whether to prosecute or not to prosecute or to settle out of court, would ask people to pay. So we've been raising funds to this means I've just explained. Okay, now let us talk about um, those who might have uh, deliberately kept monies in their homes uh, with, with the intention to convert fraudulently and uh, because now they, uh, they be, uh, they, they've been forced to pay, they are coming, coming, coming out with, with those uh, monies. But originally the intention was to you know, convert those monies into their own personal use. Um, what happens in that situation, especially when you've established that the original intention was to fraudulently convert those monies? <coughs> yes, I quite agree with what you were saying. And in fact, this is one thing that the commissioner has a very strong view on. We are now making plans to go to parliament to make amendments to the law that will allow further sanctions. For instance, if you've paid back government resources you have misappropriated in exchange for prosecution, then certain um, penalties should come. We are thinking of um, having a law that would allow um, the ACC or the courts, as the case may be, this is out of court settlement, it may not be the court, the ACC, to impose sanctions on people that have paid back. It could be a ban for public office or a ban for some years or suspension or any other thing that will serve as a deterrent. But it is, uh, as it is now, there are no laws to say if uh, the case or the matter is settled out of court and the monies are, are, you know, are recovered, nothing happens after that. It stops, right? Yeah, nothing, nothing happens. You know, you're not going to be named or, or, or shamed. Wait, which or, is, no, you are wrong. You are named and shamed. Okay. In fact, we issue press releases talking about the person, his specific position, what and what he did. Go back to our press releases. There's naming and shaming, okay. of course, clearly that will cause. And um, yeah, sure. But, but, but we are living in a situation where you know somebody naming and shaming is not enough. You know, ceremonials celebrate corrupt people. You, you understand? Ah, that money get money. Oh. Your point but is, is very point? strong. Yes. Your point is very strong. That is why, like I said, the commission is thinking of uh, pushing for amendment to that law. So your thinking is, in, is consistent with what we believe, that uh, paying back <laughs> is not sufficient, that something <coughs> more has to happen. But the general thinking right now is to retrieve these monies. Because sincerely, sometimes if you go to court, you are not even sure that you'll get all what's, what you're asking for. So there, is a lot, there, there are a lot of um, things we take into consideration. So in other words, in other words are you saying, uh, somebody was saying you know, a few days ago that it is better that the monies are recovered you know, out, outside the, the judicial system. Because they say somebody who's, who's having billions of deals and the agency takes the matter to court, that person is, used to use, is going to use about uh, money, he or she, you know, already having in possession to, to probably, you know, move around the, 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 the judges, the magistrates, and the case, as the case may be. And at the end of the day, you know, the agency will end up losing. 
there was a no case exhibition, no sufficient evidence, you know, to kind of uh, convict the person. When in fact what has happened is that um, the person has used that money, yeah, to kind of um, uh, manipulate the, the judiciary. Mm. So it's better you get the money instead of going to court. <coughs> well, that, that is the opinion of the person. I don't want to express an opinion on that. All I know is that um, the general thinking now is to go to the money. There's no go for the money. There's no guarantee that um, if you go to court, you'll have all the money that you are seeking. Okay, now let's come to the, de the detention of a um, former internal affairs and uh, defense minister, retired uh, 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 Major Paolo Conte. You know, what, what, what are the, 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 the charges or why he's been detained? Well, we've not proof for charges here. No, that is why I, I, I for I ask yeah, you know, why we, he's been detained. Yeah, we are investigating allegations of misappropriation of public funds, and those allegations are bordering and touching on um, certain procurement activities that occurred under his leadership as minister, and then um, Mr. Sanamara was the, the permanent secretary then. So their detention is associated with um, allegations or suspicion of misappropriation of public funds. So and now that um, he's been questioned or he's been interrogated by uh, or he's been detained at the uh, CIB headquarters, um, are there plans to levy charges against uh, the retired uh, Major Paulo Conte? The investigations shall so decide. But what I should tell you right now is that. Uh, he shall be granted bail today, he and Mr. Sanamara, and the investigation shall continue from that point. And trust me, we shall update the public as and when we need to, based on the cause of the investigation. Now let us talk about corruption generally in 2018. How was the fight against corruption? Well, we, we had a lot of positives. For instance, in the MCC Control of Corruption Index, we did extremely well. We scored 71%, which is the highest we've ever had. In the full barometer, we have more than 70% of the respondents saying they have confidence now in the fight against corruption. So 2018 was a very good year for us. We're waiting for the TI index also. We're expecting the TI <coughs> index to come out, and we hope to do well in those indexes. So in the full barometer, in the Moe Prime index, in the MCC, the indicators are very positive for 2018. All right, okay, thank you so much. And he is our Deputy Director of Public Education and Standard Outreach, Anti-Corruption Commission, Alassane Kagbo. Continue to stay with, uh, with us as there are more questions to be asked. Now we've got some concerns uh, from the general public. Uh, this one says, if Karamo Kaba is saying that the SAPP is creating tribal and regional conflict by chasing APC members, in the fight against corruption in Sierra Leone, let him or the APC answer these questions. Is the SFPP fighting corruption or ethics and, re well, we're talking about ethnicity here and uh, regionalism. Well, uh, did APC uh, give a fear or even administrative uh, stewardship during their regime in Sierra Leone? This other one says, Joe, this is a witch hunt. This other one says, the rules of evidence should, uh, should be spelled out. You cannot take people to, into process that is, uh, that is not clear. This other one says, APC cannot escape public, um, um, public policies and the laws of the land. This other one says, Mr. Sano, what did, what did not... <coughs> Why didn't you raise the issue of the rules of evidence that the APC is um, talking about? This other one says, um, Sana does, well, <laughs> is, this, person is, uh, this one is not quite clear, but uh, he, he or she is trying to say that uh, Sano is being biased. This other one says, is Sano a spokesman or an activist? This other one says, Sano, we don't want um, selective justice, but equal justice and the uh, government must prepare <coughs> to that. This one says, well done, Sano. You speak from uh, the hearts. Well, these are some of the concerns from the viewing public. Well, uh, Kramo Kaba, this person is saying, if Kramo Kaba is saying that the SFP is creating tribal and regional conflict, 
why we are you not uh, very transparent during your your tenure? I think that is what exactly this person is, this person is trying to talk about. Yes, I will come to that question. But uh, first of all, I see my brother, Mr. Joseph uh, Sano, sitting here and supposed to be in the middle as uh, civil society operating. But I wonder why he was so angry at the APC and myself. I see to say the SAPP is a saint. And for my brother Josie, say, he came here copiously challenged by the issues just to spew out polemics against me and APC. <laughs> and you see, the two of them, they are speaking from the same page, and the title of the book is SAPP. Sano is a known supporter of SAPP and advocate of SAPP. So I'm not surprised at all. You know, for us, we have put the issues, I mean, our position very clear for the public to know. We have demonstrated in parliament and out of parliament that we support uh, the fight against corruption. That we will stand with the government strongly on the fight against corruption. We started it anyway. And by the way, I want to commend the uh, 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 inspect, I mean, uh, Superintendent Bremer. He, he's so articulate. He understands. I, I, I don't know if I've had uh, a more articulate police officer in doing his job. But I also want to thank you for highlighting the 2017 uh, Peace Index for APC. But let us see what happens next year for SAPP. Because that is why I give you the undertone that it, it, it is not anymore. Anyway, so we, our position is clear. And we have put it in our press release. You see, there is a double-edged double sword here against the APC. Whereas they have, uh, they have these three commissions of inquiry all set up and ready to <coughs> roll in a very subjective manner, the ACC is under there still going, grabbing our people and locking them up and not charging them. And look at the, the stiff bail for just suspicion of corruption. The stiff bail, one billion lions worth of property, two of them, two shorties, for just suspicion. And the charges have not been established yet. So it's all meant to keep our people demeaned and sub, sub, submissive to, to government uh, 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 whatever. You know, you know, we have to really be careful. The APC is not a small party in this country. If you won by that small margin, you must know that this is time for reaching out. We are not saying don't implement the anti-corruption, which is good for our country. Bringing corruption to the maximum minimum, it is all we are praying for. And we want that more than even the SAPP. But you know what? Let us put it on a fair playing field. Let us go to that farm of sacred cows or Hindu cows and bring them all, arrange them, and get them ready just like they have made us ready. I cannot travel. Those who have jobs, they have taken their jobs from them. They have almost arranged them and making them ready. Go tell take them out of the job, all of those who fit in that category of working with the former president of the Republic of Sierra Leone from 2017 to 2018, remove them from their jobs, take their passport from them like they did to us, and, 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 and subject them to taking permission if they want to travel, and so that when you're ready for them, you can reach them like they are able to reach us now. So when they talk about these people can be prosecuted. Yes, they can be prosecuted, but they are enjoying facilities that we are not enjoying. They have their diplomatic passport, they are flying willy-nilly, and they are serving the same government, wherein they are in the same bandwagon as us. So why create that uh, uh, lopsided arrangement for the people if you really are serious about corruption? Let us be serious about corruption. Let us be serious about fighting corruption, bringing the rules of evidence, Bring in uh, 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 the, the rules of uh, court because if the, without the rules of court, it's, a, it's like putting the cat in front of the horse. And, and, and this is not going to work. And that is why we believe that it, it is going to be very, very challenging for the SAPP government to carry on. And we have made our position very clear that our people will not be subjected by 
I mean, to a lopsided, a lopsided, a lopsided COI, a GTT that has already preempted our people and called them criminals and Ayambis coming from nobody but the president himself. We will not subject ourselves to a court system that does not have the rules of evidence. We are so strong about our position. And when you are fighting bad laws, we will fight bad laws through the civil okay, means. No, the, the, point, the no, civil the means. Is the, bad laws are there no, to be challenged. No, 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 bad we, we laws are, are there to be challenged. It happened in South yeah. Africa. A yeah. minority yeah. party went and you developed the constitution of the apartheid. And you then they, they, they rule now, us the badly is, as black now, people now for is, over many, many years. The is, they imprisoned uh, 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 Nancy Mandela for 26 years. Okay, he let came me out what and continued his civil fight now, against, uh, against bad law. We will fight bad law to the last. The, 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 the issues here in, in, in English, somebody is saying that uh, about Joe, this is a uh, witch hunt. It is. How, how do you react to that? Well, that's, that's the opinion of the person. But uh, I've established here very clearly that. Uh, the commissions of inquiry, that's a, uh, an accountability mechanism. People have to be held accountable all over the world now. That is the norm. In South Korea, the former president is in jail. In Brazil, the former president is in jail. Most countries, so what is wrong with you? I'm not part of the global village. What is wrong in asking people to account for their stewardship? It is just normal practice. The GTT report is uh, making reference to uh, that was a stock taking exercise, and in the process, we realized that a lot of things went wrong for which certain people should be held to account, and those names came up. And that's not the be all and end all of it. Because as I speak to you now, uh, we have a technical audit going on in certain sectors of governance. Uh, in the same period, uh, 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 between uh, uh, November 2007 and uh, April 2018. And uh, I want to let Kamwa Kaba know that this is a peaceful country. You want to take credit now for the 2007... Uh, 17, yes. Yeah, 17. Yeah, we well, fine. Well, good. And that is mainly because justice. while we are in opposition, we subjected ourselves to the law. We are law-abiding. We are peaceful. That is what you don't want to do. In the social media now, you have your operatives there, the Jibril, Bangua, and, and the likes. I mean putting out all sorts of things about the country to create a semblance of disorder, a semblance of chaos, instability, so that investors will not come. That is what you guys are good at. You, 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 you place your party before the country. And that is why you've ruled this country for the, for the, for the, for, for the better part of the time we have been in, the, in, in independence. Okay? You ruled between uh, 1967 or 68 up to uh, uh, 1992, and you took it again from uh, uh, 2007. No, who took it no, in let me come. No, 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 yeah, let no, 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 sir. You have to be a good historian. No, I don't know. I never interjected. Yeah. Let us speaking. know who no, took please, it in 1992. Mr. Moderator, that's uh, 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 he wants to go down memory lane. Let him be a good historian. No, but you made your points. Let me come back, please. Joe is protected. Yeah. Exactly. When he, when he, I'm just, when I'm he, just when he, when he was speaking, he wasn't. To so be a, you good, have a good historian. And uh, you also <laughs> ruled between 2007 and uh, 2018. Work the mathematics. SRPP ruled from 1996 to uh, uh, 2007. And we've only been in office for eight months <laughs> since we came last time. And we're in also in power um, from between 1961 and 1967. Check the mathematics. You have moved this country um, for the better part of the time we have been in 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 in, in independence. You understand? We have been an independent country. Yet you have nothing to show for it. China. All all we have all we have. You understand? The, uh, 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 all we had under the APC: tribalism, regionalism, sectionalism, nepotism, all the isms. That's what. We and that have. is what continues to affect the country today. So. All I'm, what I'm trying to establish is that uh, why we are in opposition, because we are a law abiding peace political party, we subjected ourselves to the laws of this country. We are expected to do the same. But that is not what you are doing. And I want to inform you, please, yeah, that the government, like the Minister of Information said, this government is not going to tolerate any, any illegal activity that will, 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 will trigger chaos in this country. No way. Because the government has the sacred responsibility to protect lives and properties. And that is what we are going to do. 
And uh, to say um, the Commission of Inquiry is a witch hunt, in 2008, the APC set up a Commission of Inquiry. They also had a stock taking exercise. President Koma jokingly said that the then ACC Commissioner Abitijako was going to have a busy Christmas in 2007. Because, as far as he was concerned, uh, um, um, uh, whatever uh, uh, reports they got from the stock taking, uh, after uh, uh, the APC came to, to governance in 2007, um, those were replete with uh, corrupt practices all over the place. And it was on that basis that he brought in Justice Sibenga Jame and established a commission of inquiry here at Miata Conference Hall. And the first person to face that commission of inquiry was the former education minister, now currently the minister of health, Dr. Alpha Tijawi. That commission of inquiry went on for two good years. You wasted public money on that one. And after that, he died in natural death. Only you can explain to the public why. So is commission of inquiry strange? No. And do your tenure, you set up six of commissions of inquiry. There was the Kevin Lewis Commission of Inquiry after uh, now the president, then uh, uh, flag bearer, was stoned in bow and wounded. Nothing ever came out of it. You have the Shiasmosis Commission of Inquiry after offices were attacked and vandalized all over this country. Nothing ever came out of it. The recommendations were made, they were left to accrue dust on the shelves. You are quite aware of that. So this is the first time we are having a commission of inquiry. Former President Alaji Amati Jankaba was subjected to a commission of inquiry, faced a commission of inquiry in 1967. You are aware of that? We have had six of commissions of inquiry in this country. So what's the hue and cry over the present one? Because you guys don't want to be held accountable. No way, it's not going to work. You are not going to blackmail us into discontinuing this thing because we owe that secret responsibility to the people of this country to ensure that their they they stolen funds are recovered, right? And it, uh, it, it, like President Bill said uh, a few days ago, when the, the 7.5 billion check was handed to him, he's going to use part of that money to build a diagnostic center. You understand? And all of the monies we are going to recover, we are going to ensure we provide adequate social services for the people of this country because that is their money. Those monies were stolen in broad daylight. Today, people in the last government, they have mansions all over the place. Their families are bored. They have the most expensive vehicles. Where did they, 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 they get those monies for? They stole them. And they, that is why this is not a political party thing. This is a national thing. We want to ensure when we recover those money, for now, for now we are implementing the free education yeah, project. Your kids, they are all benefiting. That is what we do. We provide, we, we ensure we implement a national project. And that's what we are going to do with those for. So no matter how you shout from rooftops, my brother, the commissions of inquiry are going to go ahead and the objective will be realized at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. that is our point on this issue. We know this is no which one. It's about accountability. And we are setting standards. Someone, I, I, I don't know whether, uh, uh, but that issue has been coming up. Oh, don't forget that tomorrow we come. Yes, <coughs> we are aware of that. President Mion is very genuine in the fight against corruption. That is why he's going to ensure we, we establish standards. Henceforth, anyone who holds public office will be subject to public scrutiny. You have to be held to account. You have to explain how you utilize public funds. We have to set that standard. Okay, well, um, and that is the only way we think this country is saying, but, um, uh, As far as uh, they are concerned, uh, they, 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 they are skeptical as to how fair the, these commissions of inquiry are going to be. And he is saying that they will not subject themselves. And we are not skeptical. You know, we know he's not going to be fair. Now, now, he is saying that they will not subject <laughs> we are definitive themselves about to that. any uh, commissions of inquiry uh, well, uh, in the hours, uh, uh, kangaroo courts. Yes. But the thing is that now, uh, 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 Mr. Kawa, we are talking here about government. No, I thought you wanted if to pose uh, no, I'll come me. back to you. Now, if oh. government says, uh, for example, you as a citizen, talking, mm, yeah. as a citizen, <laughs> if the, the, you are summoned by government uh, to go answer questions, we say we will not, uh, you, you will not uh, make appearance. Yes, we have made our, our own position very clear. We will not subject ourselves. To a kangaroo, to kangaroo commissions of inquiry, we will not. But, we will the, not but, the, but, the, but the commission has not. The commissions have not started work. Yeah, if they start working, we have put our position very clear. Now we are being hit by a double-edged sword. Anti-corruption is on this side. The commissions are locked in our shadows uh, in days to come. So, you know, how do you treat the people like that? After we have run a government in ten years in a very peaceful way. And we have, and he said there's nothing to show for it. 
if you compare SAPP and APC in terms of development in this country, man, it is very, very unfortunate for you to state that. Let us say there was corruption. Yeah, I am not been, going to yeah, defend. Been I'm not going to be the devil's, the, the, the devil's oh, advocate. Anytime you have been uh, 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 but, but to make a sweeping statement that there is nothing to show for it. Oh, except today, corruption. You are, you, now you, in fact, you are driving a car now in Freetown. Uh, Ten years ago, you wouldn't dare to. And people are bringing in beautiful cars, and then they even bring in, I don't know how to call it, the most fanciful car in the world, Rolls Royce, into this country. Because we <laughs> have put our money she where our mouth is. Our, who bought it? Uh, we put our, I, did, I didn't, I, I don't want to know uh, who brought it, but cheap. somebody brought it because you know, somebody, you know, somebody you know, brought it. Uh, I don't want to know who brought it. Have time to somebody brought it because have time the roads are good now. So ah, we okay. put our money where our mouth is. Right. We brought in free, uh, free health care for our people. And the infrastructural environment of the uh, of Sierra Leone is so very improved now. We improve on uh, anti-corruption. We improve on the laws and and, and 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 the constitutionality. But now what we have is a, a, a moral derailment, ethical derailment. We have unconstitutionality. We have a, a flagrant a, abuse of the rules of law. We are being ruled by the whims and caprices of few people who call themselves governors. This is really, really bad. We have to do the right things in this country if we must buy in into all of these things that we are talking about. It's very easy. Reach out. Reach out to the opposition. We, are, we were very willing to meet the president just immediately after the election, when there was this rampant uh, 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 human rights abuses against our people, we came to the president. We said, okay, we have to do something about this. He agreed with us. We were very happy. I was part of that uh, 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 I mean, committee that was set up to go around the country. We went around the country. We took stock of all what happened. This was so unbiased. There, was, uh, there were issues against SAPP, there were issues against APC, there were issues against NGC. We collated them, we wrote a, a, a report, and we brought it to the same state house. They did nothing about, they did nothing about it. Instead, st state-sponsored human rights abuses went unabated. Right. Rape against women. And, and abuse of okay, uh, now, human rights okay, okay, and now, beating of parliamentarians and unlawful yeah. okay, uh, installation now, now, of uh, anti-corruption boss and etc. 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 How can we go on like no, this? No, the and then you are saying that this is not an ethnic based to disadvantage the Northwestern people. Man, this is a sham. It's an absurdity. Allow the moderator. I want to listen to the moderator. No, like not, we are not the moderator. We are not at a bad time. The man is posing a question now, to me. You, you are not the moderator. Now, why should you keep quiet when the moderator is posing a question? Okay, now, okay, now, 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 well, uh, now you cannot first of understand all, the question because he was of all, busy of, arguing well, with me. That, that, exactly. I don't know. Yeah, you were busy arguing with me. You were not paying attention. No, this is not the place of Palava. Exactly. This is not the place of Palava. No, this is not Palava. Let him mind his own business. I mind my own business. My issue is with you, not with you. That is why I've asked questions and you're not... Exactly. The man is crying. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, before I respond to that question, let me just make something clear here he uh he attempted to to uh to attack my personality oh no you attack my uh, personality he said um i did not have a vehicle <laughs> 10 years ago i now have a vehicle yes oh no i did not say that I you mean, see he was not paying attention no, he was busy fighting with me no that's what you no, said. i said people are bringing in cars I no, said, you, you have you, a car. no no first no i said maybe you, you have me. a car now you see no. he was not paying attention no, 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 he was busy no, no, fighting no, 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 i will not say so, you no i did not say that that's what i'm saying but let him let him but let him respond no he cannot lie on me when i'm sitting down here what you said i did not say that and we have what you said, no, you are the moderator. Yes, what did I say? What did I, I say? Okay, now, correct me. No, set the record straight. No, that's no please no, set no, the record straight. I did not say that. We yeah. must set the record okay, straight before we move on. Set the record straight. Joe, you have okay. Okay. I will intervene if he does not set the record straight. I cannot say that. Ten years ago, he said I did not have a car. You see, that is wrong. Now I have a car. You are the moderator. You have what I said. If he is suffering from selective amnesia, I'm not. 
No, you said the record straight. You said the record straight. Okay, Thank you. Please. Thank you. What I have was Welcome. that. I just don't now, want to reduce said, myself to your what level. You said, yeah, so, yeah, because now, you're taking me from what I, I, I went, I went, I went to you. a better school, the boys school. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, what, <laughs> mm -hmm. I went to boys school. Okay, now, Joe, that's a mediocre school. Yeah, boys school is a mediocre school. You understand? Also. So it has now come to schools. Okay, okay. Set the record straight. Okay. You are the moderator. But you heard what I said. Let this man allow no, me for one. No, he has to set the to respond. But you set the record straight. Yeah, you are the moderator. We are on here, please. You are the no, moderator. It's not a quote. No, we cannot move on from quote. here, okay. or else I will pack I, my stuff I, and I, walk I'm out. Not, I'm set not, the I'm record straight. You are the moderator. I, no. I did not I, say I that. I have to make that clarification. Okay. Yes. Understand? Make clarification. Because it hinges on my integrity. Well, well, you see, I did not question your integrity. Some of us. I did not question Please, your integrity. Let me I did not question your integrity. No, about, I know uh, what Joe, I said. Joe, Joe has the I said now, people, let me repeat it so you will understand it. I said now, people can bring cars into the country because we have developed the roads. Before I said, you this said is how that, they brought, you said me. No, no, no. I said, I, said, I, said, maybe, I said maybe you have a car now. You understand? Ten years ago, you know. No, no, ah, no, I did not say that. Well, you said smoke. I did not say that. Yeah, thank you. I did not say okay, that. But let's no, okay, fix let it, fix it. I, no, I, I, let us I know what no, I said. Let us, let, let, no, let, okay, us, let me go straight to the point. It's a conditional statement. Let us you have us. No, let us agree. You are the moderator. So. Let me no, no, let, let us know. I don't think I will not test now. I will pack the board because you guys are not. I have an official vehicle. You understand? I have an official vehicle. Right. And uh, which I'm entitled to, of course. I also have a private vehicle that was sold to me on higher purchase. I will pay for it over a period of time. I have integrity. I will not steal to buy a car. So if that was the suggestion, I've made that clarification. I'm satisfied now. We are on yeah. yeah? And the, the, other, the issue of was voice said. also that he made mention of. They were on social media the other day claiming that... Uh, uh, that vehicle was bought here by uh, SAPP operatives. Some of them even suggested that uh, 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 that vehicle was owned by His Excellency the President. Only for them to realize the next day that that vehicle was owned by a private businessman. Foolish propaganda. Right? So I'm glad uh, we've laid that to rest now. The issue of good roads, well, uh, as I speak to you, we are using revenue generated from within the country. To do the roads. Where he stopped, we are continuing from there because governance is continuity. But we are also going to do fresh roads, new roads that you don't do before, like for instance, most parts of the southeast, and that is what we find troubling because this is a nation. The resources of the country belong to all of us. I do not see any reason why, uh, when you want to distribute those resources, um, some parts of the country should get more. On what basis? I don't know. When you go, for instance, to the southeast, most of the roads, uh, some of the roads leading to some district headquarter towns, they are not paved. For 10 good years, they were in power. Can they explain that? As opposed to other parts of the country, yeah, where you have paved roads going to all district headquarter towns. So, some of those roads, we are trying to do. Because the people in those parts of the country, they feel deprived, they feel neglected, and they are also Sierra Leoneans, right? The national cake is for all of us Sierra Leoneans. So now that I've established that, let me come now to the to the the, the issue of them not facing the commission of inquiry. We are not going to make any comments on that for now as government because we know the commission of inquiry has been established by law, and uh, the laws are quite explicit. If you do not face the commission, it is quite clear what happens to you. You understand? So at the end of the day, the commission itself will know what to do about that. When you are invited to face the commission and you decide not to go, the commission will know what to do with you. So it is as simple as that. All I will say here is that uh, we know the process is going to be free, fair, transparent, free from fear. That is why we have decided to to have um, coverage by the media, live coverage, both television and radio, so that people who are not opportune to be, because we, we, we the, the venue definitely is not, is not going to accommodate many people. The main special court building was vandalized completely, and it will cost hundreds of billions to 
renovate it. So we are going to use the container offices. That will not accommodate many people. That is the reason why we are going to ensure that uh, there will be live coverage, television for where it is possible for people to watch television and radio for people to hear so that they can follow the proceedings. And we will also be having civil society, we will have the diplomatic community and plenty of other people. So what you call kangaroo, kangaroo we all know, only who is supposed to be there is there. That is kangaroo. But this one, it is open, it is transparent. So how can you refer to it as as, as All right, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Abakan um, uh, the, 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 the head of um, the uh, outreach unit of, of the office of government uh, government spokesman. No, now let us talk about uh, you know how do we expect policing to be in 2019? As we only have one, one day now, tomorrow is actually a New Year's Day, the first of January. Honestly, there's going to be improved policing in the sense that. Uh, we are going to continue to march our more resources to do our job. Uh, if you listen to the budget last budget, we had uh, a thousand police officers who are going to be elected. They are going to add up to our number. And then we, we, we asked the government for 112 million, and then we are provided almost 90 million. So which means we're going to have enough resources to do what we want to do. So let me see police is going to be very much improved, and then look at where we went wrong, and then we try to make some amends. But honestly, 20 minutes is going to be a very good year for Southern Police. All right, okay, thank you so much. I'm here is um, super, uh, Superintendent Bukema Kamara, Head of um, Police Media. Thank you so much for your update. And, um, you know, like I said uh, earlier, for this year, you've been praised, especially during this uh, festive season, for effective and efficient uh, policy. We hope you continue. Well, um, I still have in the studio Joseph Sano. Joseph is uh, from the civil society. Now, Joseph, let us talk about you know you, you listen to the debate, yeah, you know, carefully between Kramer and uh, Joe. You know, what do you make of you know probably all what they've been saying? Here? <coughs> well, for me, it's, it's a sad event in this country. Firstly, when you talk, people say you are SLPP, right? <laughs> and there were times when I supported the program. When the former um, um, uh, Minister of Works called me, he explained and said, look, these and these are not rights. For the sake of peace, for the sake of development, I will support. And the SLPP, including Josie, said sitting here, called me an APC person. Today, I am happy that Karamo is calling me an, uh, an uh, SLPP. It's no problem. But what I want to say, I have more friends in the APC, up to the President Kroma. I have more friends in the APC that I relate to more than the SNPP. But when it comes to issues of national concern, issues that deals with our women, issues that deals with our children, I don't have friends. I terminate friends because of that. So what I'm seeing, like for instance, Joe was saying, the APC, there's nothing home to write on about. I disagree with that. Because when they, when they left power, the same corruption issue arised. And a commission of inquiry was in, instead was brought up. When they left power, when President Kroma, the former President Kroma, there was blackout, and he brought light. When they left power, we had issues with road, and he made roads. But the problem is that government need to know that people need to know that government is continuity. What I had issue with, like now we've got the free quality education. Nobody, we our President Kroma brought the free health care. That was good. And the, now President Bill have brought the free quality education. That is hysteric. Even universities, when you are a female student doing the sciences, you don't pay. Student loan is coming up. Textbooks are now available to be issued out this new term. That is good. So government is continuing. What I am saying, the difference between the President Bill administration and the President uh, Kroma administration is that the <coughs> President Kroma administration legalized corruption. And the president bill. No, let me say something. I'm saying this to my fans. an indictment. I will say this. And the president bill administration is trying to fight corruption. Let me tell you, for instance, there are several instances. No, but, but, and somebody will say. Somebody we went will say, to parliament and legalized will say, corruption. Somebody will say, um, and so <laughs> but during the tenure, during the tenure of uh, President Kruma, that's a joke. That was the time, you know, he stre he strengthened he strengthened the, the, the anti-corruption commission, you know, by way of a review. 
So if you say he actually legalized, no, yeah, he I'm went just, to parliament using, and, and laid the bill using, to legalize no, every, to legalize no, no, corruption. No, no. Let me no, 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 let me come. I have the floor. It will be you and that man, but me, I am a no go area. Please stay. No, you are a go area. Let me tell you. You said that we legalize corruption. We let went to Parliament to and put let a bill to pass the bill of legalizing corruption. Let me tell you something. Sarah has a Man, that's a joke. Let me tell you something. Why I said it's legalized, it, 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 it is an idiom. Let me use it. No, use the, the right word. You know what I want to say? Uh, How can you fire somebody? How can you fire somebody for corruption? And then within the next reg uh, see, we see him again go or her going at minister. We see him again. When, let me tell you, there are certain things. There are certain principles. I don't joke with them. If there is, if an SLPP person that I know, when uh, when um, uh, this guy Emerson brought out the song to foot a letter, if we are sitting down, I will tell him. I said, this is it. If you want to kill me, if you want to jail me, I don't want to know about you. But we can't have these people. You steal from this area. They take you there, put you in another area. And we have. I was part of. I used to go to President Kuma when issues are. I would text him out. I go, I said, President Kuma, this is wrong. This cannot occur. This cannot occur. This cannot occur. And then you see, these are the people he takes again a give position. So you are condemned to area. What I want to see in this new administration, I am praying to see we are the new SCA boss, which proved to me that he is very independent by indicting any SL people member that he thinks have been uh, uh, engaged in corrupt act. I am also looking whether President Bio. After that person has been indicted, he will take that person after one, two, three more and, and then pass it over to another ministry. When you do that, when people that commit corrupt acts, right, when you give them another position to act, right, it's wrong, come on. It means you have aided and abated corruption. Even the fact of you, right, when, like, for instance, what is happening now, you understand? We should just, we should just sit down, watch, and when it is wrong, because thank God you guys are saying it will be on television, then we'll raise the issue up. But trust me, Kamo, you understand? You know me. I know you from Arsenal Drive. You know me. What if somebody, let's say for instance, like in your instance, when you were taking money, you took huge amount of money, placed it in your bag, and then came and complained that your vehicle was attacked, right? Can you carry a huge amount of money up country? We have banks. Listen, guys, don't fool us. If this government wants, they should not talk to me. But I will bring issues out. As far as I'm in this country, I will bring issues out. They will not be happy about it. And they are not bound to be happy about it. I am not their stool. I will say things that are not proper. But let me tell you something. Whosoever is against this, uh, this commission of inquiry is somebody that is against the development of this country. I tell you, even if it is President Bill or President, former President Anes Roma, it means they are against the development of this country because huge money came in. We've seen in this country where roads are awarded. When you look at the international rates and when you look at Sierra Leone rates, it's far way higher than the international rate. We see in this country project is Projects have been allocated the wrong way, and funds go and look at the Auditor General report. We went and begged the president, we begged other stakeholders, implement the recommendations of the Auditor General, and we will know if President Bill is serious by any audit report from the Auditor General, ensure that they implement it. I talked to them, we talked to them, we said, please, for the sake of the country, your children, our children, I have, a, I, I have two children. Right? I have two boys and one girl. Let me ask you a question. You think I'll be happy that they should not live a wealthy life, a good life? I should just see politicians and their children living a good life? There are so many children, Kamo Kaba, that are suffering today. They don't go to school. They've dropped out of school. We are over 57 years. We're still suffering. And people in, uh, that we voted for are enjoying. We will not be happy. Whether APC, whether SLPP, we will stand. If you like, call us APC. If you like, call us SLPP. If you like, don't give us job. Don't talk to us. We will stand against you. We are in the majority. When Commission of Inquiry comes, sit down, observe, go there. If you are not guilty, you will be vindicated because it is not something that will be done in a secret room. So what I am saying, don't play with our lives. Don't play with the women. Don't play with the children. We are in majority. 
It is not by mistake that people vote you into power. It is not that you know how to talk more than the people that voted you. You cannot come to us and beg us for vote, and we vote you. After we vote you, you enrich yourselves. I'm talking to both parties now. You enrich yourselves, and people are there. They can't get one daily meal. Staffs are there. Look at SLBC. SLBC should have been improved now. Look at this room. What have you done? What have you guys done? We, it is a shame on our part, and you people come out demonstrating, talking against the uh, commission of inquiry. It's a shame on you guys, whosoever, whether you are my friend, whether you are my relative, this commission of inquiry should stand. And if I am guilty, if you are guilty, you should be first. And again, I saw the Palo incident. Palo is my best friend. When he's out of the country, I call him. When he's inside this country, I call him. You can attest to that. But what I'm saying, I was acting, I took the anti-corruption uh, act, I was looking at it, and I noticed that the anti-corruption is different from the commission of inquiry. The anti-corruption deals with the, the, the reports or the evidence before them. So, and the, it is not because of commission of inquiry, so anti-corruption will not call somebody. But what I'm saying, I think the law said, either are three days or the highest 10 days. We are saying Palo has right to bail, but we are also saying it was a shame. I saw Samura Kamara, I saw other people. It is a shame. Fellow, when they call you for something, procurement, what? I don't go and dance for you. I don't go and demonstrate for you. I allow the, the, the law to take its course. If I see one problem, believe you me, the SLPP will say I am I, I'm an APC uh, uh, steward. I don't mind about that. I don't care. We have to have civil societies that they will call SLPP, that they will call APC, but we stand for the people. We are suffering. So what happens during the weekend was wrong. It shows that people support corruptions. It shows that people are not genuine about this country. It shows that they just come to us to beg us. He knows me. He used to live as a country. So they enrich themselves when they come to power, and after them, they use us, and our people are suffering. Your wife is pregnant. You go to the uh, to the hospital, no better. There are certain simple sickness in this country. Except you go to Ghana. Except you go overseas. This is shame on this part of this country. And you are sitting down here talking about commission of inquiry. We will not subdue ourselves to it. Shame on you guys. We want right, it okay, and we will support so it. Thank you, M. Joseph. Call me what you want to come. M. Joseph Sano um, from the civil society. Well, I still have you in the studio, Kramokaba from the APC and also Joe C from the Office of Government Spokesman. Now quickly, there are some concerns here from the public. This one says, Mr. Kaba is right. If the government is serious about fighting corruption, corruption, let them name and shame people. The APC got more seats and councils because they created those uh, seats for both parliament and, um, and councils. This one says, Mr. Kamara, can you tell the public what was the outcome of the 2008 Commission of Inquiry? Yes, and did uh, that commission had rules of evidence you, re you are now re uh, calling for? Uh, this one says, when did uh, SFPP f focus on, uh, well, so this person is saying SFPP focus on nationalism. I see more of divide and uh, rule. They don't uh, practice what they preach. This one says, Joe, is SLPP sucking more of North Westerners? This one says, Karamo Kaba, hold your peace. Let them bring back <coughs> our money. These are some of the concerns from the public. I'll start with you, Karamo Kaba. Um, first of all, uh, the 1967 Commission of Inquiry, the 2008 Commission of Inquiry, we did not hear about the issue of the rules of evidence, because the rules of evidence were included in those commissions. So these were not kangaroo <laughs> commissions. These were not selective commissions. These were not commissions that were targeted at uh, certain people and certain tribes and certain regions. So this is the difference. The Commission of Inquiry in 1967 included the rules of evidence. And if commissions of inquiry have to have that ranking of the high court, this should include the rules of evidence. And also we have said that we are not going to wait for those who were in the 
same bandwagon between 2027, between 2007 and 2018 to be called when they are already enjoying. It shows that they will not even be called. They are going to be protected. I told you that SAPP has a farm of sacred cows. These are Hindu cows. They will not be called. So if they want to demonstrate that these people will be called, let them relieve them of their jobs. Let them take their passport from their hands so they will not be flight, flight, flight risk. So like all of us, let them be, you see, more or less, they are saying that you have been arraigned and ready to be called for trial. And while other people are sitting down there, they are not arraigned. They have their passport. They are they, they're still working. They are making money. They are traveling on government budget. They are flying all over this place. It is simple. We will, we, once this thing, we are able to sanitize it as a country, then we will buy into it. Once we buy into it, and we have national support for the fight against corruption to reduce corruption to its minimal. You know, that's why I'm not going down the gutter with Sano about the OGI thing. You understand? Because he failed to understand that I am not God. I was in control of my vehicle at that time. And the money in question he's talking about is 20 million. 60, and 20 million. 60, you don't know. Million. You don't know. This is the Aussie's mouth. I am million. telling you. That is what you heard from the media. I am million. telling you. you travel huge money in your 20 million. 20 million. The money. UNDP. Wrong. Let me tell you. Let me break it down for you. UNDP issued the money at the very dying minute. And also I had to spend to move people. For it the was not issued. Hold on. In your hand, it was no, issued no, in your account. No, 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 it, it was just in your account. No, you it was a check. You know, you know, it was know. a check. You can you know, cash it. You, know. you, you understand? Please. You understand? Please. So, 20 million, 20 million left for the implementation proper in Connor District. Oh, yeah, so, so now Sano is bringing things. I was not convicted. I was not called for uh, to because ACC. of this same secret no, no. and now you're talking, talking about. I think Sano has Sano has a great uh, challenge on understanding complex issues. Now he's saying that the president reappointed people who were who, who were called upon anti-corruption and they went through the court system. They were acquitted and discharged. If the president does not give them back their jobs, they can sue. They can sue the government in this high court, or right. they can go to okay. the ECOWAS court, they can go to the highest level. All so, right. okay. Sano, tell me one, sh let Sano show no, me no, one no, person, he has stop. to show me one we person that was show. called back, that was okay, not acquitted and discharged. And he's saying that we criminalize, he said that we we legalize corruption. Let me let me speak that. He said we legalize corruption. Now, Joe, we went to court, I mean, we went to parliament to legalize corruption. Then you have to, you have to, no, his choice of words. He has to watch his choice of words. Because we are, we are about to come to the end of this. Um, um, <laughs> we, we believe in inclusive governance. Uh, of course, the motto of the SAP is one people, one country. We do not believe in targeting people from any part of the country. That is not our style. That has been the style of the APC, unfortunately. But I uh, will not emulate that because it is not in the best interest of the country. I have always maintained that uh, the people who have been removed are political appointees. And that is how it is everywhere in the world. Political appointees are removed when there is change of, of government. For one simple reason, uh, they are only giving those jobs on the basis of their affiliation to a political party and not on the basis of competence. So that is why whenever there is change of government, political appointees are removed. That is the same thing we have done here because that is how it happens everywhere in the world. So if you are claiming that it is only people from certain parts of the region that are being removed, then it is an indictment of the previous administration. That means they are the ones who, who uh, uh, appointed people into positions from just one part of the country. You understand? But uh, you go to the civil service and other public institutions. There are people who everybody knows. I mean, we are on the, we are the, on the other side of the political divide. But they are still in their jobs. You understand? Because they went through recruitment procedures and they earned their jobs uh, uh, legally. So they are still there as long as they did not openly involve in politics. They are still there. The people who are being removed are political appointees. <laughs> so we have to make that distinction very clear. We are not a tribalist. We will never be tribalistic because we believe in the one people, one country philosophy. And this is an inclusive government uh, governance. Uh, uh, we, we believe in fervently. That is what is reflective of our cabinet and other positions 
to which sentence he has appointed people in the country. All right, okay. Thank you so much. I mean, he is Abakan uh, Jose, um, uh, head of um, uh, government outreach, uh, gov uh, office of government, um, uh, office of government spokes spokesman. Well, uh, that is how I say goodbye. It has been good morning, Sagalio, which came to you live on the Sagalio podcast in cooperation. Many thanks to the entire production team. Well, until, uh, well, tomorrow is the 1st of January, which is the start of the new year. I want to wish every Sagalionian a uh, happy and prosperous 2019. Many thanks to the entire production team. I am Shaku Sumaila saying goodbye and have a wonderful new year.